Hey everybody, it's Tracy from Science Buddies. Welcome to our hands-on coding tutorial on a Minimax algorithm with alpha beta pruning. We'll be showing you how the Minimax algorithm with alpha beta pruning works in code in a familiar game, Connect4. We'll be experimenting with changing the evaluation function to see how that influences the decisions that the AI makes. We'll start off with showing you how to use Google Colab, then we'll step through each of the steps of the project together. Remember that you can find all project details as well as the starter code in the description below. Google Colab is a platform that allows you to write, run, and share code. You can run each cell either by clicking on display button here, or by clicking on the cell and pressing Control Enter, or Command Enter if you're on a MacBook. You can tell a cell has been run when you see the output here, or by this green check mark here. You can add cells by clicking on this button on the upper left here, and delete it by clicking on the trash icon to the right of each cell. If you accidentally delete a cell, you can undo it by pressing Ctrl M Z on your keyboard. Before we begin, we will need to import the libraries that we'll be using in this project. To do so, all you need to do is run this cell. We have provided the constants and helper functions that will play a role in running our game. The reason we have our constants defined as so is because we want to reduce our use of magic numbers which are just numbers that are used in the code with no explanation or clear context. For example, we have a row count and column count defined as 6 and 7 respectively, since the game board of Connect4 is 6 by 7. In our create board function, if we didn't define our constants, this would be 6 and 7 instead, and we might have trouble remembering what those numbers meant if we look at the code sometime later in the future. Constants also make it easier to make changes to the code, because then if we want to change the number of rows or columns, we can simply change it here instead of going through each of the functions one by one. It's a good habit to avoid using magic numbers for this reason. And of course, to make these constants and functions available in our game, all you have to do is run these two cells. Now that our other game functions are set up, we can now move on to creating the alpha beta AI player. Here in our score position function, we have set up our evaluation function. You want to edit the evaluation board here, which represents each position on the Connect4 board. You can imagine that certain positions on the Connect4 board are more valuable in winning the game than other positions. For instance, positions in the middle can result in more winning combinations than positions on the edges, so you may want to give more weight to those positions. Experiment with changing the values of the positions to see how that affects the decisions the AI makes. Let's move on to the explanation of the Minimax algorithm with alpha beta pruning in code. The Minimax algorithm assigns values to different game states based on the desirability of the AI player. If a game state results in the opposing player winning, it has a value of negative infinity, indicating an unfavorable outcome for the AI player, but it can be any large negative value. On the other hand, if the AI player wins in a particular state, the value is set to positive infinity, signifying a favorable outcome for the AI. A game state resulting in a draw is assigned a neutral value of zero. Once the base cases are checked for our game ending scenarios, the algorithm proceeds to evaluate possible moves. If it is the AI player's or maximizing player's turn, the algorithm initializes the maximum evaluation score to negative infinity. It keeps track of alpha, which represents the best score that the maximizing player can achieve so far, and beta, which represents the best score that the minimizing player can achieve so far. It then iterates through all valid moves on the board. For each empty space, it simulates the AI player's move, recursively calls the minimax function for the next level with the minimizing player's turn, and updates the maximum evaluation score accordingly. If at any point, it finds a node where the current player has a choice with a score worse than the current alpha beta range, it prunes that search at that node. This is because the opponent will never choose that path due to the minimax strategy. This process is repeated for all possible moves and the algorithm returns the best score and move for the AI player. If it is the human player's or minimizing player's turn, the algorithm initializes the minimum evaluation score to positive infinity and follows a similar process. It simulates the human player's move, recursively calls the minimax function for the next level with the maximizing player's turn, and updates the minimum evaluation score. If at any point it finds a node where the current player has a choice with a score worse than the current alpha beta range, 
it prints that search at that node. The algorithm then returns the best score and move for the human player. After you have finished defining your evaluation function, you can just run this code to create the AI player. After running all the previous cells, the game is now ready to play. To play the game, you can just run this cell, which contains the main game loop. There is no need to run the previous cells again as you play more games. When it is the AI player's turn, you can just press enter. And to choose your move, you enter the column where you want to put your piece. Remember that columns start counting as zero, as you can see here. If we have set appropriate values for our evaluation board, the AI player should be able to play very competitively. Have fun testing out different values for the evaluation board and make sure to keep track of wins and losses. And with that, we come to the end of this coding tutorial. Remember that you can find written instructions and example code for this project linked in the video description. For over a thousand other projects for all areas of science and engineering, visit our website www.sciencebuddies.org.